Okay, here we go. Let me start up the uh, stream there. I think we're going out on uh, Facebook. Okay, all right. Should be. Yep, yep. Here we are up on Facebook page. And I'm uh, I'm checking everything out to make sure it's okay, and that we're moving along, singing a song side by side. Okay, let me see here. I think we are uh, going to be all right. Okay, so let me just bring in all admit all these people who are here on the uh, on the. Let me see here. Admit all. Here they come. Here comes Charlene in uh, uh, down in California, and there's Rick Checkman and Brian Neary. Uh, has to take the privacy thing off his off his webcam. There we go. There's Scott Boddicker, Len Lafrisco, Edward Berger. Hello. That's Edward. right. That's right. Yeah. How you doing? Good. 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 Great. Okay, uh, and uh, I think we're we're ready to go here. I'm just uh, got to look and see who else is trying to get on that I haven't admitted yet. No, everybody's on. Everybody's on. Uh, Scott Boddicker. Uh, and uh, let's see here. Oh, here comes Marjorie. Here comes Marjorie. Okay, we're going to admit Marjorie. There we go. Hey, Marjorie. How are you? Where are you calling from? <laughs> Next door. <laughs> Next door. Where are you calling from, Marjorie? I'm calling from next door to you, Edward. Yes. And, and, uh, <laughs> that would be the next room over, right? Uh, two rooms over, actually. Two rooms over, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, Shecky is here. We talked to Shecky yesterday. We had lunch with Shecky. Quite a lovely virtual lunch with you guys yesterday <laughs> a virtual, a virtual lunch literally a virtual lunch uh yes we were over at these friends house uh, who we are all familiar with and rick, rick was supposed to come and tell him what happened rick well i had like a hundred degree temperature it just felt like because <clears throat> our friend steve has had a few medical problems nothing bad but yeah. i just felt like eh, you know Maybe I better not. Yeah, you're right. So what we yeah. did is because it was a lunch, we invited him to lunch by calling him on Zoom. And then yeah, so I the, had I had a three hour lunch with Alex and Marjorie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it was really, it was really nice. Oh, here comes what's her name. Here we go. Admit <laughs> what's her name. Uh yeah. She and actually, Lori called me today to see how I was feeling. And I was like, no, I feel fine. You know, not. Yeah, you just nothing. didn't want it. You didn't. Want, they are very paranoid about getting COVID. about COVID. They even said, uh, well, if you want to, you can wear a mask while you're here. You know, and I went, I don't know. You know it's not, it's not and I would have worn a mask if they'd asked me to, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But so it was it was it was nice of you not to come actually yes but as i said to laura i said well he got deviled eggs <laughs> yeah and i got to take them home too and i ate them all last night rather than save them for you you can buy a lot of insurance for laura yes, yes. i had one of those for years you know she keeps putting down there what's her name so often that i'm getting to uh, 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 I, I keep forgetting i keep forgetting what her real name is what? Change right now just to make you happy. Mm -hmm. no, no. Yes, yes, make me happy too. Alex Paula just uh, uh, texted me. She came down with COVID. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, oh wow. but it's mild. Who is LS? They are trying to get on, but it's they... probably Lori Styler, Steve's wife. Uh, no, it is. It, 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 I don't. Well, think Lori so. just wanted to watch it, not be on it. She wanted to watch it, not yes. be on. Well, she said she watched last week's show because when I spoke to her today, she said I watched last week's show. Yeah. So now she's just there. Yeah. Well, she said she wouldn't have a video feed, so that's why I'm thinking maybe it's her. Yeah, Lori, is that you? I see her. 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 her, her audio i guess isn't on either 
<laughs> but uh, I'll get rid of it because you know if we're not gonna, yeah, if, if we're not gonna have her actually on it, uh, it doesn't uh, doesn't work right. Okay, there we go. You know, I got a note from today, and I I had to write. It was on uh, Facebook. Was from Tony, who said, "I think I might call today." Uh oh. <laughs> well, there goes Marjorie. <laughs> and, I'm out of here. Uh, I, I'm out of here. I, I, I wrote him back. I wrote back there. We don't want you. <laughs> so uh, I hope he doesn't try to call. If he does, I just won't put him on because I I don't want to lose my lovely and attractive wife both on this show and in real life. Really? You know. Get a message, Shecky, and I now. Huh? He's gonna start messaging Shecky and I know. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Or my phone's gonna ring in a moment. You yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Mandy, how you doing, Mandy? Good. How are y'all? Yeah. And I, I, my memory's really well, terrible. What? I I clicked on the improve my appearance while I was doing my settings. <laughs> <laughs> You, that. you you really think you need that, huh? Yes. But I mean, isn't that crazy how you can do that? You can yeah, well, you, you don't look any different, really. I, it probably didn't do anything. I called you Amy a second ago. See, this is what's happening with me. I'm forgetting stuff like crazy. But I've been taking this new pill that's less. It's the same drug, but it's less. And I'm starting mm -hmm. to slowly remember things I didn't remember. Uh oh. <laughs> <I'll be second. laughs> like that woman above you, Mandy, is Marjorie. I yes. remember that now. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You know. Anyway, so how are you all doing this week? Okay. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, it was quite a week last week. We won't talk about it, but, you know, it, it was quite a week really quite a week um and uh then today there was even more news about a certain lawyer who will, yes yes who, who had the same prostate operation i did with the same doctor who has hair dye issues mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> hair dye issues do you remember that yeah 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 great yeah. Was supposed to show up in georgia yeah, yeah. well it's it's a straight we won't go we won't go into that either because then we'll just start talking about politics and who wants to do that, right, Scott? Right, right. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, where oh, okay, are you? Okay. Are you at home? No, I'm I'm back in Iowa. I'm in the library. So I got to be kind of cool. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's, it's it's not that bad. We're in the library. Yeah, yeah. Why are you in the library? They have free internet. Oh, they have. Free <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Jeez. Well, yeah, it's cheaper. Yeah. Wow. Look, let's face it. The world is crazy, and nothing we can do to change it. Okay. It's getting worse. Yeah, it just it doesn't get any better, does it? You know. No, but I think I told you. I read a book about the 1850s, and it's. Basically the same thing, then. Mm -hmm. You know, in so other it's words, not what like you're trying to tell new. us, the message you're trying to put across here is we've always always been a pretty ugly country. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I was talking to uh, one of our guys uh, who I talked to on Saturday nights, uh, as well as on the show, uh, and he was saying, if you think it's bad now, when the Constitution was written right after Yorktown, there were people losing their property because they sided with the British and uh, were had to move back to England and uh, their homes were burned down. So I went, I guess nothing's changed much, you know? No, no. I, I mean, honestly, I hate to say it. I don't think things have changed that much. Yeah, but I think it's a little bit worse now because all the crazy people have a have a platform to get together. Well, now they have guns. Yeah, well, you know, the, but the internet, you know, the internet brings all these crazy people together now. You know, you're a crazy person in, in San Jose, and now you just found another crazy person in New York, and you find another crazy person in Florida. And now well, what, you're, you're, what you're saying is, is they have a uh, an outlet to communicate well, with each other. Yeah, 
Yeah. Mm. So when they say let's go storm the Capitol, it's not just you know fifty people in D.C. It's people flying up. Well, it, it's gotten to the up. point where, for instance, um, um, the FBI is worried because they see things on places like Truth Social and whatever. Where someone's going, let's go attack the FBI. Let's go to the uh, you know go to this place and do this to that government organization. Um, you know, so I mean, it, 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 it I, I, we have two methods of communication that are causing a problem in all of this. One is the social media, which they can spread their conspiracy theories and they can make plans to do stuff, go to Washington, riot, take the Capitol, whatever. And the other, oddly enough, are the news outlets. Because they're ginning up the news in order to get ratings, in order to make well, because they're twenty four seven and they have to have something to talk about. Yeah, and and uh, they don't want to run out of stuff to talk about, so they gin up everything that happens. Oh, here comes uh, Mike Chisholm. Uh, we will admit him. Um, you know, so I mean, it, it, it. What do we do? You know, it, it's it. it we have all these things going for us and communication. I think what you're trying to say, Rick, is communication is faster than it's ever been. In other yeah. words, oh, yeah. if I decided I wanted to uh, go and attack the Capitol back in the 1700s, uh, I'd have to have somebody ride from town to town to tell people to do this. <laughs> you know, uh, now I just go online. Yeah, and say, hey, we're going to be at the Capitol on at one o'clock on whatever day it is, and you know, heck, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah, you have to make you have to make flyers, flyers, and pass out the flyers. <laughs> no, you don't have to make the flyers. No, before, before, before you, before, before you had you to have, have a, a no, before you had to have a. Are you ready for this mimeograph machine? <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> the fax, fax, everything. Do you remember mimeograph machines? How oh, many? Yeah. Well, wait a minute, just by age, how many here remember, raise your hands, mimeograph machines? And smelling them when you got them? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, those were the, there was another machine, the ditto machines. Yeah, ditto machines, yeah. And what they did, they did that by... Uh, was, was that the one with the purple ink or whatever that yeah. was? It wasn't, yeah. It wasn't ink so much as it was indelible ink. And uh, you got maybe 50 copies out of it, and the drum was full of this alcohol or something yeah. and uh, boy am i feeling old now with the mimeograph machine you made a stencil mm -hmm. so you mm -hmm. would like type on it and it would cut into the stencil mm -hmm. and then if you wanted to put pictures on there you had to do that with a tool by hand you remember this don't you charlie charlie's yeah. going yeah yeah i remember <laughs> And with, but with mimeograph machines, you could make thousands upon thousands of copies. So, uh, yeah. But now, again, you don't need to. You can just go you on to your that. little no. internet connection and, you know, hit send. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and come armed. Huh? Come armed. Bring your arms. <laughs> yeah, to arms to arms. All weapons arrive. Well, we also have uh, we have more um, uh, weapons that kill better. Yeah, that's true. If there's such a thing as killing better, uh, you know, a guy can go in with one gun, just pull on the trigger, spray the room, and kill twenty people. You know? And then claim he's not guilty. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. This guy the other day, I couldn't get this. Who was it? The guy. The, the, there was some some guy that went in, shot a whole bunch of people, and he, you know, they caught him with the gun and they tackled him to the ground and then they put him in jail. And then when the lawyer came, they went before a judge and he pleaded not guilty. How, how do you do that? That happens all the time. I, I guess you got to do that initially, and then you can always change your plea. But uh, I mean, how's he not guilty? What 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 didn't you do? Aren't you proud of what you did? You set out to do it, you know. Admit you did it. So I didn't get it. Well, but that's the way the justice system works. You're supposed to say I'm not guilty, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, but anyway, hello, Mike Chisholm. We were talking about you at lunch yesterday. What's that? We were talking about you at lunch yesterday. Who's we? 
Uh, well, <laughs> Shecky and the people we're having lunch with, and we're all agreeing what a douche you are. Who, yeah. <laughs> your, who did your show last week or the week before <laughs> that hasn't aired yet? Ah, okay. Yeah, well, that sounds about right. That uh, sounds like and, you've all got it right. And as I say, he really enjoyed doing the show with you. Outstanding. I really enjoyed having him. I can't uh, I can't wait till we do some more stuff together. With Steve? Yeah. Steve? Yeah. Sport yeah, Steve. stuff? With Steve? More stuff. Oh, more. Some I more thought you said stuff. sports stuff, and you guys shocked me. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, if there's anybody in this world night, who knows said, less about sports than I do, it's him. Yeah. No, but Mike said to me last night, should I get Carl on the show, you know, on the webcast? I was like, no. No. Carl, these are two people who were writers for Letterman. Writers and Letterman and good friends of mine. Tell you and the actually, story. it's the reason you got a job at Letterman, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and then they were fired after the first year, and you went for the next uh, thirty or thirty-three what? years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you know, we did talk about that on the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he. he but you know, I, I'm like I'm like the talent booker for Mike's show. Somehow, you it's know? fantastic. <laughs> it's fantastic. Doors are opening like crazy. Bridges are being built just based on Shecky's words. It's incredible. Like Jerry Mulligan's going to do it sometime this week, I think. Oh, that's yeah. good. Yeah, very excited to have him on. Looks like Steve Young's coming on this week as well. That's going to be a good one. Uh, they're all they're all good ones. I'm very excited. But, but tell tell about uh, about uh, what's his name, the writer uh, you just mentioned, Steve, uh, Steve Weiner, oh, Carl or Steve. No, no. Uh, what's it? And one's a com that's coming on. Oh, Jerry. Jerry Mulligan. Mm. I remember brilliant, you telling me about him, man. What? I would say brilliant man. Yes, but strange. He he had to quit the Letterman show, right? Well, no, he. It was he, for you know, strange reasons. Age, can we call huh? it? What? I'm saying he hit what he calls retirement age. Yeah, but the thing was that if he didn't retire from the Letterman show, he wouldn't get his retirement from the union. Right, you wouldn't get the pension. Yeah, so he had to quit the Letterman show in order to get his pension. But then he was also quietly doing stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he didn't have to be a permanent employee any longer, but he. But he could send a joke in or whatever. I, I wasn't aware of that, that uh, I wouldn't I would think that if you reach a certain age, you still get your retirement, even if you're still working. Yeah, but now he just, you know, again. It's like it was time for him. Yeah. Yes, Charlie. That's the way it works in Texas. There are a whole bunch of people that, that re retire, get their retirement, and then go back to work for the state and get two paychecks. Really? Okay. Yeah. And do you start getting more retirement as a result of that second stint? I don't know, because I didn't choose to do that. So, I think yeah. you become a contractor, so no. Yeah. yeah. Well, you take that for Social Security, so your Social Security would go up. You yeah. keep staying in the Social Security. Yeah, you do do that. Yeah. So that would move up. Yeah. With my union, I get a pension of about $1,000 a month. Actually, it's about $900 uh, a month. And uh, it, it, I didn't work that much under AFTRA, oddly enough. You know, only my first couple of years here in New York. Then every other job I ever had was not an AFTRA station. Not uh, illegally, not a not a scab station. It was just that a vote was taken, and they didn't want to become part of the union. Uh, so I I didn't work as much as I would have if I had like stayed in New York and belonged to the union and kept getting union gigs. Then I would probably be getting a couple of thousand a month, you know. But hey, I'm not complaining about nine hundred bucks a month. Yeah, to go back to go back to Jerry Mulligan for a second here. Um, Jerry Mulligan, by the way, folks, in case you don't know, was a writer for yeah, but kind of the head writer, wasn't he, for Letterman? No, no, he was a joke writer, and he goes back to the morning show. Okay, all right. Even before he actually helped Dave write monologue stuff for when Dave guest hosted the Tonight Show. Yeah, the long history. like him here. Merrill were very that's how he got on our to our show. Merrill you have Merrill to explain Merrill to these people you see I mean you're just talking to each other and leaving everybody out here 
Merrill is well, Mer Merrill was our head writer on the Letterman show, just one of the best writers in the world. Merrill Marco. She's the one that came up with stupid pet tricks. <laughs> well, I'll still argue that because I don't know if you remember the show AM New York. And they did it on that show. Really? Oh, okay. All right. Back in the late 60s, John Bartholomew Tucker was a host. So I'm not saying she didn't create it, but no, she championed it on our show. Right, right. And uh, the other thing is, is that um, the best thing I ever saw Meryl do after she left Dave, she went on to do other shows. And she did a bit that I think was pure genius. She, the premise was, I've never considered myself a, a, an attractive. Oh, is this the makeover? Yes, a, a particularly attractive woman. So I wanted to get a makeover from people who are the best makeover people around. And he went out and got some transvestites <laughs> to make her do a makeover on her. And when they got through with her, she looked like a transvestite. It was amazing. <laughs> but it was a wonderful piece. I mean, it was just so funny, you know. Yeah, that was like on Practical Jokes in, I forget what the show was called. It was Something one like of those. That. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I saw a brilliant thing with Dave on uh, the YouTube, uh, which they ran the whole the whole thing on. You probably remember it happening, is when they got one of the people from Friends, I can't remember which actor. Uh, Matt Perry. Matt Perry. Uh, to go across the street to this big, huge sign that was looking in Dave's window of friends of all of them with their heads on top of each other going up six stories on this building and they got him to go there and to deface the whole thing from top to bottom uh in fact they, you got the fire department to get a fire truck to get him up there yeah. <laughs> and it turned out that it after it was over all they planned to do was to hose it down because it was supposedly water soluble ink paint and it turned out it wasn't. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> I mean, that was wonderful. And the next day, they're still there with mustaches on them and X's through their faces and so on. But I thought that was brilliant. Yeah, no, we did a lot of interesting stuff, can I call it. Didn't uh, NBC take a big picture of Jay Leno and put it in that place where Dave could see it out his window? Uh, the number one in late night. So well, Dave, you remember Dave also did that, what was it, number three in late night? Yeah, so he Fox got Square. he went out and he paid for a big billboard in Times Square that said David Letterman, number three in late night. Yeah. Anyway. Enough of your your inside stories about a show yeah. that no longer exists. You know, I'm wondering how many years. You know, you often told me, Shecky, that fame is rather fleeting. That there are kids right now who don't remember the Beatles, no, who, and couldn't name them. Right? How long do you think it's going to be before there are some people who don't know who David Letterman was? There already probably are. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, my, my kids don't know who they are. Yeah. You know, or don't know who Johnny Carson was, let's say. To oh, pick forget another name. forget that. Yeah. Johnny Carson whole, never existed, according to them. You know. One of the catalysts to the whole show is my daughter-in-law came over to the house and she was talking about this piece of comedy that was on a show that she likes. And I just looked at her and I said, no, that person did not come up with that. Dave came up with that. And I sat her down and made her watch 20 minutes of YouTube of, 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 you know, to prove that it was stolen from Dave. And the whole reason the Letterman podcast exists is for that reason. Yeah. So, so people will know that uh, that torch needs to be passed. I'm aghast yeah. at how quickly Johnny Carson was forgotten. Yeah. But also, he never did anything once he left The Tonight Show. Right. Yeah. Jay refuses to leave. <laughs> hey, here's my sports car. I'm in uh, my 1920s. Actually, actually, I got to say something. I'm not a fan of Jay Leno's. Uh, I wasn't even a fan of Jay Leno's when he was sitting across the table at breakfast with me. You know, I mean, I just wasn't, I have never been a fan of Jay Leno's. The but I should admit, the things I've seen him do with cars is pretty yeah. good. Pretty I agree. Interesting. Right, Brian? You're I, I, I agree. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. The, it's the what cars he, were fantastic. He, huh? 
the cars that he did were great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it was a major, you know, yeah. more but, than. But also, you know, experience. I was doing stand up. He was one of, I admit, one of the great stand ups I ever saw. Oh, we, uh, uh, David uh, Feldman and I went to Frost Amphitheater where Jay Leno was going to be playing. And we watched Jay Leno do a two hour set, two hours of stand up. And we were just in awe of it. We were just, he was such, a, he was so good at it, at least then, that it was amazing. It was just amazing. And um, uh, uh, what he would do is he came out at the beginning, and the first 15 minutes of his act was all brand new stuff. Brand new. This happened yesterday, and this happened the day before, and this happened yet, you know, two weeks ago. And then, about 15 minutes in, he launches into the rest of the act, which was always set in stone. But you didn't realize this wasn't all fresh because he started out fresh. Yeah. And we we, we just were a, just a, a an awe of how well he did that act, you know. And yeah. Uh, well, yesterday at our virtual lunch, when I mentioned Red Skelton, who you were just like, huh? <laughs> I saw him live. He was great. Well, you know, he may well have been, but I never saw him that way. I saw him. No, because to me, he was like Steve Warner made me go. You know, every, that kind I of, couldn't you know. watch uh, Red Skelton because every time he went at the end of the show, God bless. Uh, I had to throw up. I mean, I started getting vomitatious. You know. Um, but yeah, no, I saw him at Carnegie Hall, and I have to admit, he was great. Yeah. Well, I mean, I and I, I don't doubt it. Okay, I don't doubt it. Um, something I, I had to tell you, but I can't remember what it was now. So I can't remember anything anymore. Uh, but how are you doing, Mandy? All right, she got to turn on her mic. She's muted. Yeah, you're muted, Mandy. Right, hey. I'm way, you know. Um, I'm doing good. How are you? How are y'all? Yeah. How's everything at the office today? Good, the usual. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you, you seem to like your job. Um, Okay, you seem like you don't like your job. Publicly, <laughs> my job. Huh? I mean, it's um, one of those kind of jobs where you, it's, it's very kind of high demand. It's kind of demanding. Mm -hmm. I work directly, directly for the owner. So, but it's, I have some freedom, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I don't punch a clock or anything. So I had a two hour lunch today. It's nice, but I'm going to stay till, you know, late. Yeah. But. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Real estate is an interesting industry, that's for sure. Because you kind of, while you're doing bookkeeping, Marjorie kind of did that too with, at her office for how many years were you there at? Uh, 18. 18 years. It's amazing. Really. Yeah, it is. About it, you know? I've been with this company for nine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Marjorie was, I think you were very happy with your job, right, Marjorie? Well, you know, it was the they were good to me. We got trips to China. Yeah. You know. It was all it was all good, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to travel when another position that I was in, um, I had more travel, but that's okay. I mean, I get to go on read every year to a winery, you know, stuff yeah. like that. You get to go to upstate Georgia. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <really. laughs> upstate Atlanta. Yeah, you got a lot of excitement down there politically going on. Yeah. Between... So you're going to talk politics, Alex. No, no, no but between between the uh, the uh, the investigation of Trump down there, and you got a you got a, a governor's race. Yeah. You know, Stacey I... Abrams, and you got huh? I'm trying not to pay attention. <laughs> oh, really? I mean, I know it's coming soon, but I didn't even vote in the primary. Yeah. Yeah. Did we vote in the primary, Marjorie? We did, didn't we? I thought. And then they said there's a primary coming up. Well, it's one like in two weeks, I think. What, what's that for? That was so ideas. I don't even know. That's like 
like uh, the senators and so it's something to do with the redistricting. You know, oh, they, oh, you know, yeah, mm -hmm. okay, yeah, but uh, but it's like you know, in my mind, we already know that that woman who I don't care for is going to be the next governor <laughs> again. So what, you know, Kathy Hochul. Yeah, it's the personality of a trout. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, then we got we got a we got a mayor here. This mayor is just oh, getting just, to me. He's as bad as she is. He's now going down to the uh, Port Authority bus, Port Authority terminal, bus terminal and greeting all the guys who've been put on buses from Scott Boddicker's <laughs> neck of the woods. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's, it's Charlie's neck. Why don't we? Why, why don't we go? Why does somebody do something about that governor sending them here? And why here? Why not? Oh. And DC. Also well, DC. But again, you remember most of them got off the bus before they got to New York. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. One bus got here that was loaded up with 50 people. By the time it got here, there were only six on it. <laughs> Speaking yeah. of stealing things from Letterman, didn't Larry Bud Melman do that in like 1986? Yes. Yes. Yep. Yes. He yep. went down to the Port Authority he bus. He went to the terminal. Port Authority bus terminal handing out hot towels. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, that's that's pretty much what the mayor did. Yeah. Yeah, welcome to New York. Here's your hot towel. You know, feel <laughs> like I And you know, that's what we need. We need more homeless people in New York City. That that's yeah. really what we need. Thank you so much, Texas, for sending it to us. <laughs> Better you than us. <laughs> no. But he's not in Texas right now. He's in Iowa, so he's home safe on this one. It's yeah, but again, cool. you know, these what we, what, what people we, who are right. coming here probably are trying to have a better life okay yeah yeah, uh, yeah yes scott. a lot of these are the criminals from mexico that are coming up scott was trying to say something i, I was just going to say that it is very white up here where in iowa oh yeah, yeah oh yeah very white yeah yeah, yeah. What, what do you mean by that scott exactly <laughs> uh <laughs> I, I, I did. I did see an African American today when I was out on my run. So, yeah. well, you saw one today just looking down at one of these squares here. <laughs> if you in haven't person. noticed, in person, in person. Did you give him the secret nod? Did you give him the secret nod so he knows your your friend? Gave, yeah, yeah. I, I gave him a wave. Good. Yeah. Everybody good. waves in Iowa. Everybody waves. <laughs> Well, I, I can I can understand why there's certain parts of the country that are terminally white, because you know they were settled pretty much by white people, and and slaves didn't migrate to those areas, you know. So I mean, yeah. it makes sense. There's no racism to, that made it so, you know. When I when I go to Sweden, it's very white, blonde, and tall. Yes. <laughs> nice. These kids, the kids are like six. I'm six four. These kids are six five and six six, getting in the elevator, crazy. Yeah, it's really. Yeah, all the women too. Very tall. Well, let's see. I was in. Uh, I was in. Uh, where was I? Norway. Where did I go, Shecky, for the Olympics? Uh, uh, was that Lily Hammer? Lily Hammer. Lily Hammer. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, uh, by the way, nice, nice country, especially in the snow. It's really, the snow is wonderful. And then I realized that snow's there all year long, you know. It doesn't just go in. That's where I ate moose. I had moose for a lot. I had reindeer. Right, it was a reindeer, excuse me. We had reindeer, yeah. I had, we had reindeer. But I didn't know it was reindeer. I thought it was just hamburger meat. It was like McDonald's, right? I said, boy, these burgers are delicious. What, what are that? What, how do they cook them? They said, well, at the beginning, you got to start with a reindeer. And I go, <laughs> Rudolph. Bambi? <laughs> and, Rudolph. Rudolph? Rudolph. Yeah. I got one hamburger. had this big red nose in the middle of it. It was terrible. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but uh, what? what? It's an icon right now. What? What? Right. Hold on a second, because you cut out when I talk and you talk. So now talk. I said I have a friend right now that's in Iceland. Ooh. Oh, and, she, and she's got like full like puffy jacket, scarf, hat. It must be cold there. Yeah. Uh, I think it is. And is he toasting marshmallows in the volcano? No. <laughs> <laughs> Here, here's the big question is it that way all year long in iceland or is yeah. it because it's got a bad rep because of its name you know yeah. is, 
Is it <laughs> always cold or is there a warm season in Iceland? Does anybody here know? Yeah. Raise your hand if you've been to Iceland. Okay. Oh. Oh, oh you have been to Iceland, Shecky. I was in the airport. <laughs> well, I don't know if that counts exactly. <laughs> well, it what were you doing in the airport there? Just passing well, I was through. Heading to Luxembourg, and the flight went from JFK I... to Luxembourg, you know, to um, Iceland, and then, you know. Yeah. The rest of the week in Reykjavik is 52, 56, 55. So, not bad. Yeah, that's where she's at. That's in August. Well, I know. Yeah. <laughs> it just looked very gray, you know, just kind of cloudy. It just, it just looked chilly. It's you know? so rain kind of every day. Yeah. Yeah. We, Marjorie, we should go to Iceland this time of the year. The reason being that our uh, uh, we wouldn't have a uh, air conditioning bill. That's right. Ah. You know? Because I hate, to, I hate to see our air conditioning bill this month, okay? Yeah. Oh, it's supposed to get hot again next week in the 90s. I mean, we we went for a month and a half without it going below 80 degrees, above eight, below 80 degrees. Yeah. Without I mean, turning it off. How's it been over at your place, Rick? Do you use the air conditioner a lot or do you just let yourself roast? No, I have it set right now at like 78 Okay, well, we have it set at 77, but it's it's going, you know. Well, no, because it said it's 74 in the house, so it's not air conditioning right now. Okay, hmm. yeah. You have your thermostat at 77? Yeah. 78? 78. Oh, you stand it. Mine's at 68 or 69. <laughs> oh, my God. Wait, 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 wait. You see, but you're living with a myth, Mandy. <laughs> You're living with yeah. a okay. myth that if you turn it down to 68, okay. it's going to always keep it cool, and it will. But oh, yeah. the, reason, know, it is the reason you set it up so that it turns itself on and off is to save money. Yeah. When you turn it to 60, yeah. when you turn it to 68, it's going to be on all the time. You know? Yeah. I'm doing some uh, some uh, Celsius to Fahrenheit conversion, 20 degrees to 68. That's what I have mine at all the time. I'm with Nancy. I walk in, when I walk in, I, I'm like, I'll always go, ooh, it's cold in here. Like yeah. when I come outside when it was 90 and I walk into 68, I'm like, ooh, but I, I don't know. I just don't want to be hot. <laughs> my, da my daughter, Stephanie, wants the AC on and then I go and see her in her room and she has all the covers bundled up. With uh, and her exactly. I like to have covers. Hold I don't on I I go get my, on covers. my phone is <laughs> I know. Hey, Len. Hey, Len. Marjorie. Len, say it. Len, what? say it. Oh. Say it, Len. <laughs> I'm glad you put your pants on, Alex. Very good. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Len. Okay. I just got tired of those $400 electric bills that my ex used to run up. You turned into so Hello, hello everybody. How are you? Hi. Oh, my God. Who's that guy? It's a miracle. <laughs> Alex, hurry up, that? Alex. Your wife's cheating on you. There's a guy in there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Rick. I, Rick, are, are I you mean, I live watching? in a small are apartment, you? so it doesn't really matter. No, but what I can do, what I can do with my phone is I can turn the air conditioning on and off in the bedroom. Yeah, oh, there, I, got uh, I have that on my world. iPad where I can, you know, oh. set it. Rick, Rick, are you watching the the uh, the below the below Mediterranean? Do you still yeah, watch those? That's a huh? great show. They have the down under now one, but they had everything. I mean, Alex always complains about Peacock, but they had the whole they have the whole season on Peacock, thirteen episodes. Did I miss something here? <laughs> We're trying to change the subject because there's a guy in your wife's bedroom. <laughs> it look like something a little more interesting probably yeah. the second to last episode of the mediterranean one were friends of mine oh um, really the, city. The, the canadian they had canadians on where they talked about the canadians there they were the second to last episode oh they yeah friends. yeah oh what are you talking about the mediterranean show yeah the down really under is the the doc, what's the doc guy dave i think the the captain dave or something i don't something. like that oh. other show though no, I, I don't either really, chicky and i only watch what the mediterranean right whatever it was called yeah yeah below deck <laughs> mediterranean the new one is the down under yeah actually really nice areas they, they do a lot of uh reef snorkeling and stuff well that already ran yeah, the whole thing's on Peacock. Yeah, now, yeah. but it's running through whatever cable channel slowly. 
but everything's I, on. I peacock. keep trying to figure out a reason to have peacock, and I can't justify it. You feel the same way, Scott? Yeah, I, I can't talk too loud. The librarian came to me already. I, I thought there were, I thought there were people from NBC there who were. <laughs> I think she heard about the black guy statement. Oh, <laughs> Well, you know what? Why. I just watch. I, I I have Paramount Plus, which actually I I it's I pay nine bucks a month for it, but it's yeah. worth it. It's really worth it. And I've been watching all the episodes of Ghosts. Have you seen anybody seen Ghosts? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Love that show. It's a good little show, isn't it? But that's a but that's a CBS show. So isn't that a one of the CBS streaming? Oh, that's services? why it's on Paramount Plus. No. Yeah, Paramount I mean, is CBS. It is CBS. Yeah. Yeah. So I have a question. Are y'all talking about Below Deck, the Bravo show? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Because I know you can get stuff on Hulu. If you have Hulu, you can get Bravo things, I feel like. And Peacock. Like, this one, the whole season's on Peacock, the Down Under one. Okay. I guess it's the same thing. Either <laughs> get Peacock or get Hulu, whichever uh, one. Yeah. I just get a free, I get a free uh, log into Hulu because my daughter has a student account or something. I just but, Everybody likes the new captain, so Mandy, you may want to check a couple of. Okay, yeah, I used to watch it when it was when I just watched it on cable on Bravo. Mm. But this is the new, the new one, Down Under. It's a new boat and everything. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's not the old guy. The captain's not no, an old no, guy. No, it's the new one. New well, one. On Mediterranean, we have all love them. We have Captain them. Sandy. No. Yes. No, this is Captain something. I forget what it was, but all the girls. Want and them. apparently, she okay. was not the nicest of women. I do, you know, again, I don't know, but you know. I think he finally admitted on the show she's a lesbian, right? Oh, I yeah, I don't know. Yeah. All I know is I watched Woodstock '99 on Netflix this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> it was it's called Trainwreck, Woodstock '99, <laughs> and it was definitely a train wreck. Yeah, I had no well, idea. Heard, somebody else said they watched that and they enjoyed uh, it. Yeah, it was I, crazy. I didn't realize it was that bad. I saw the trailer. Mike, did you say the same thing? I saw the trailer. Yeah, well, it a bunch it's of guys. funny because I'm a big music guy, and uh, 94, Woodstock 94 was an incredible, cathartic experience, all this stuff. And then I had some friends that went to 99, and it was the exact opposite. It was awful. And it's cool that all these years later that it's coming out and talking about that now. Well, I don't know why anybody would want to do Woodstock again anyway, because nobody realizes. If you analyze the original Woodstock, it was only well known because it was a colossal failure. I mean, it just, I mean, I was there. It was a clusterfuck. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it was horrible. There's a lot of people who watched it, but there's a but, lot of people. Well, they watched the movie, they went, oh, look at all the groups and so on. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. people got mud all over them, but so what? You know, but the fact was that they at one at a certain point, uh, Bill Graham was there, and these people kept coming and kept coming and kept coming. And Bill Graham, I saw him say to somebody, "I've got an idea. What you do is you build a big trench here, you fill it with oil and gasoline, and light it on fire so they can't get in any other way but coming through that entrance." Uh, I mean, it was just, it was horrible. Well, it, that's what ended up being the big thing at Woodstock 99 was they decided on the last night, let's give everybody a candle. It's like after they had taken away anybody's ability to light anything, then let's, let's give everybody a candle. So all these fires started. It was a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. And I think these people are now like in their forties, like running the country. I'm like, holy crap! Like, <laughs> well, Woodstock, what was that? 68, 69. Yeah. Those people, it's like fifty plus years ago. No, oh. I'm talking about Woodstock '99. Those young okay. people that were out of their mind on drugs are now like in their forty. You know, yeah. having kids and you know being like regular people. What What I don't understand is why anybody would want to do another Woodstock. I mean, well, they're trying to make money. They that was it. Yeah. The original one was was famous because it became a classic mistake. Okay, eventually you think it became so? a free concert it became a free concert because they couldn't stop all these people from coming. Uh, I mean, See, that's interesting because my generation doesn't look at it that way, or at least no. you know the folks in my uh, the iconic moments that happened in the original Woodstock. 
I think is what they were trying to replicate in 94 when they uh, you can't replicate they that. One. You can't replicate that. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. it happened once and that was it, you know, <clears throat> and you can't relive something like that. I think I've seen other Woodstock, the original Woodstock documentaries where, you know, no bathrooms. So everybody's, you know, going bathroom everywhere. I mean, all those types of no food there. So right. all those type of things, nobody like I think what Michael Mike's saying is like, you know, we don't really hear about that unless you hear a documentary. All you hear are all the wonderful performances and, yeah. uh, and free love. Yeah. Free free love. Love. Very free. Well, because <laughs> in the movie they show all the individual acts. So they're good. Right. Okay. I get to see Jimi Hendrix and Crosby Stills and Nash and, mm -hmm. uh, and I get to see so and so and so and so. But what they don't, and then occasionally they would show you some people sliding in the mud, which mm -hmm. looked like fun, mm -hmm. and swimming in the water nude. Oh, hey, sex, love, and rock and roll, and all that. But mm -hmm. the fact is, it was tragic. These were a million people who it was impossible to feed mm -hmm. and to shelter and to take care of. And it was, it was a very difficult situation. But Mandy, uh, Mandy, I watched a trailer, and they showed a lot of, like, that the crowd was like 90 something percent guys yeah so it seemed like there's a lot of harassment going on the girls right. there were just oh, like wow. yeah were really apparently bad. there was some assaults you yeah know. I mean, it was like a, it was like a bro fest well, i went yeah uh, it was so bad i, I, I looked i looked at that crowd and that dot and the trailer and i felt uncomfortable <laughs> yeah it's just like, like oh dang you know this yeah. gen generation just well, I mean, I, I went to it because I had uh, the ability to go as, as press, and I went in a back way, drove in a back way, but it still took me like an hour to get to the grounds uh, mm -hmm. because the, the, that procession was going so slowly. And then I got to the press tent, and that's where I spent most of my time there. And then I had to come back to New York because I had a radio show to do. Uh, so I came back with Paul Krasner from The Realist, who needed a ride back because he had a date that night with a soap opera actress. <laughs> uh, um, uh, uh, Did you go to 94 and 99 or just 99? No, no, I went to the original one. The yeah, original but did you, one. Did you go to the other two? No. You didn't go to... Okay. Oh, no. Listen, after going to one, I'm not going to the others. Why? <laughs> okay. Why? I have bragging rights, you know? Come on. I, you know, I didn't realize you were going to go as press. I thought you just went as a hippie, you know, just. <laughs> no, I went there. It was, it, I'll tell you a funny story. We're, I, I, there's a press tent. There was a press tent behind the, the, the stage. And that's where we're all hanging out. And I was there with, uh, with uh, Jerry Rubin was there and Abby Hoffman. And we were all hanging out, talking and whatever. And all of a sudden, uh, all of a sudden, one of the writers for, I think it was the New York Post, which is a very right-wing newspaper, stands well, up. Well, I don't think said, it was in those days. It was still liberal. Well, either that or it was a daily news, but it was somebody who was pretty conservative and was looking for a a quote. So he, he stands up and he says, hey, any of you guys, because they all look like hippies, okay? Uh, we all did. We had hair down to hair, if you can believe that, and, you know, whatever. He says, any of you, I need a quote from one of the uh, the uh, the festival goers. Can one of you just tell me um, a, a quote, something you would like to say about the festival or whatever? And Abby Hoffman stands up and says, yeah, this is the greatest event since the Kennedy assassination. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy types it. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. There's your quote. And that was when I first learned the press really wasn't worth crap. You know, they're just sitting there looking for the best quote they can lay their hands on. And man, that was it. <laughs> yeah, was well, it's like, and now it's unfortunate. This the whole Anne Heche thing. Who cares in theory? Did you see how fast she was going? Holy crap. Yeah, video. Oh, do video. you mean by after the crash or before the crash? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying. I mean, I'm very sorry the woman passed away, but it's like... Who cares? Who, who was she? You know, she was a mediocre actress. Oh, God. She had a mediocre career that she pretty well sabotaged. I liked her. I'm sorry. You guys are wrong. Why'd you like her? 
I liked her. She was in. She's. I thought she was a good actor. She was in Volcano. She was in. Uh, yeah, she was in Volcano. That is one of the words. acting words. forces of all dog. time. Oh my god, I love White Dog. She was. She started out on Another World soap opera. Another World. She won an Emmy on that, if I remember. Yes, correctly. I mean, I th- and she was Ellen DeGeneres' girlfriend. Yes, yes. Wow. and that's the only reason you even know who she now. was. Yes. Yeah, I agree. But she did a bunch of TV shows. She did a bunch of movies. Uh, and I, the great, yeah, I mean, the great, the great, the... personally. But you know, come on. I mean, she was no Jane Fonda, but she was still. I, I well, like... let's say, let's say she died at eighty-five. <laughs> let's say she died at eighty-five, just normal circumstances. Do you think she'd even make the newspaper? If she lived that long, yeah. No, because she blew up a house. She went into the garage that, that, and yeah, it was blew up that. a house. She did. Yeah, she, yeah that's, she crashed. That's how she died. She oh, that, that. But I'm talking fire. about. I'm talking about if she then went on to live to be 85. Oh yeah, no, I agree. You Without that, be nobody like, would even mention yeah. her. Oh hey, Anne Hayes died today. Remember her? Back? Oh, yeah, wasn't she? She was, she was on another then. world. Whatever. Yeah. And who? <laughs> yeah. Did you watch Another World, Mandy? No, I was in All My Children, General mm-hmm. Hospital. Did you I mean, watch it? Susan Lucci. Oh, my God. I, I, a, I don't know if any of you are, are bothered by this, but I was a longtime fan of Days of Our Lives. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, that's going to cable. ABC. Well, ABC. well you, know what they're doing? What, you know what they're doing with Days of Our Lives? It's being uh-huh. going to Peacock or whatever. It's going to Peacock. Yeah. Now I have a reason to subscribe to Peacock. <laughs> I thought all of them were canceled except for Young and the Restless. No, I don't think they're, free still to on. they're not on a lot, but like Days of Our Lives will still be on five days a week, but on Peacock. Oh. Okay. okay. With all my children was canceled. The yes. other ones were all canceled. Is it still on at all or is it gone? No, it's gone. AMC's they stopped. Gone. Yeah, they stopped. Yeah. Now you're you watch General Hospital, Rick, to this day. Oh, yeah. Day you watch General Hospital. Yes, I do. They had the best, like actors. You know, Demi Moore, Rick Springfield, yeah. John Stamos. The best people were on there back in that the seventies and eighties. Yeah, the eighties. You know, Tony Geary. You know, Jeannie Francis, who's still on it. You know, oh, Luke, whatever. they are. Luke and Laura are still on there. No, Jeannie Francis is still on. Tony Geary retired and lives in Amsterdam. Okay. They were they were the biggest story around. Yeah. Well, that was that whole thing of that wedding in what nineteen eighty one or two, whatever year that was. You yeah. Know? But I remember that was they the were craziest like, story on. They were they became big stars as a result of that, at least for the moment. You know. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, it was funny. Well, that's why Liz Taylor mm-hmm. did the show because right. she wanted to work with Tony Geary. You know. Wow. Yeah. I mean, so they were they were they were kind of big at the time, you know, uh, mm-hmm. but I never watched it, never watched it. I like Susan Lucci. You like oh, Susan yeah. Lucci? Well, she, was, she was on what? Well, she was on uh, maybe, um, I'm going to say All my, All my children. All my children. Well, so what's yeah. happened to Susan Lucci? Is she now out of work or does she go over to another soap? She does. She does like um, QVC or whatever. Like she's a gazillionaire. Like she made so much money. Yeah, she sells stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, She's I, I like the fact that she allowed herself to be the butt of every joke on Hot in Cleveland. Oh, did she? Yeah, yeah. I need yeah. to watch the show. I heard it was good. My sister oh, it's told very me it's good. It's a good show. Actually, it is a good show. How old do you think she is? Who, Susan Lucci? Lucci? It's She's at least probably. 75. 70. Um, I'd say 75? Yeah, she's 75. See, I could have cheated <laughs> this gone. Echo, how old is Susan Lucci? Echo, I did. <laughs> how old is Susan Lucci? Susan Lucci is seventy-five years old. Hey, December twenty-third. That's what? close. December twenty-third is close to you. December twenty-third, yeah, well, it's closer closer to Christmas than to me, but you know. Um, yeah, I can remember watching her like when I was a little girl. My mom would be watching it, and I remember her being on it. And then when I was like. In middle and high school, we watched it in the summer. We would watch it all summer, and then we'd somehow try to keep up with it. Like I'd VCR it, like when I was at school, and watch yeah. it at night. You know? Yeah. Crazy. Wow. Yeah. 
um uh you know i mean i i just think that uh um you know i i enjoyed uh, days of our lives for some reason i just got stuck on it you know but you know the thing about soap opera performers they what? work their rear ends off mm -hmm. yeah uh, mike you had something to say uh, i was a little facetious but uh the brady family was oh. captivating beyond all measure yes uh are you kidding me well, I'll tell you, I, I, I know who the Brady family is because when I was in junior high, over the summer, like Ma Mandy was saying, uh, there was a girl that I really, really liked, and I used to go over to her house and watch Days of Our Lives with her every day. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, oh you mean the Brady yeah. family on Days of Our Lives? Yeah. I thought you meant the Brady bunch. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> and, you know, Kelly Ripa and Mark Consuelos were on All My Children. Yeah. That's how Kelly Ripa got That's her That's how show. they met. Oh, yeah. 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 But Mark Consuelos is on. No, he's not on Riverdale anymore. He's not anymore. He's not. Well, his picture is, was last year. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder, did the actors get paid for their picture, their likeness being portrayed on the show? Like if they have a painting of the guy, you know. I don't know. Did of Mark Consuelos. I saw him on something else. What did I see him on? I saw him on something else where he played the father of somebody. But anyway, yeah. yeah so. Hey, wasn't Jennifer Aniston's dad Victor Kuriakis from? Uh, yes, absolutely. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what were you saying, Marjorie? What What, what are you doing? Oh, I have to call doctor's office before five. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Another Bye. appointment she wants to make with a doctor. It's their only <laughs> social life. I'd go check her room. We saw a guy in there a little bit ago when you left. <laughs> I'd go check her room. Some guy was in oh, there. When I you see, left. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, Eric, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Susan Lucy. What was her her name on Days of Our Lives? You remember? Erica Kane. Uh, sorry, sorry, all my children. Erica Kane. Erica. Right Very good. Yeah, she's worth eighty million dollars. Can you so. believe this show has <laughs> turned into talking about soap operas? Are you are you ready for that? <laughs> yeah. No. Well, yeah. and then you put down Anne Hesh after you're talking about soap operas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, she wasn't a great actress, okay? She was in 50 movies. Give me a fucking break. Oh, my God. Send it, send them all to Alex. Go ahead, Charlie. Hey, Sally Brasco. Sally Brasco. That is sad. Oh, no, you're talking about Anne Hayes, not Susan Lucci. Uh, I said Anne Hayes. She's in Donnie Brasco, right? She's Donnie Brasco. Yeah, she was in Donnie Brasco. Another yeah. good one. She was in lots of dog, good man. The Dog is one of the best movies. I love that movie. What movie? Wag the dog. Wag, Wag the, the dog. dog. Yeah. She was in Wag the dog. Charlie, don't get so excited here. <laughs> wow. I liked her. You guys didn't like her. She was in the She was a bad driver, obviously. <laughs> Did you, uh, you know, black people have a problem with high blood pressure, and I understand it now. <laughs> yeah. It's very sad that, that they released that video because that's so creepy. That video that shows her going by so fast and then you hear the crash. Yeah, I didn't see that. Well, they even no, had well, on the video of her writhing around on the on the, the gurney on the, on the on the cart or whatever it is, taking her to the ambulance. Really? Yeah, this was on somebody's like ring doorbell video. Yeah. From, and it, you see the car go by so fast, and then you hear crash, you know, boom. Oh no. So, so bubbles bubbles had a joke about that and he took it off. What, about what? And Hesh. What was the joke? Uh, he took it off. Something about she failed her valet parking license or something. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> it didn't help that this happened. It was right funny after before we knew she was in the house. Oh. Yeah, he, oh, yeah, he took it off. Yeah, he did. Yeah, uh, con this content is not available right now. Uh, I bet you they took it off. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Ask him next time, Alex. <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, um, just, so, just so Charlie could hear it. I mean, we we all feel sorry that somebody has died here. Oh yeah, but, no, but, I. But feel as a person, sorry, the woman as a person, away. she had pretty much become a train wreck. But they think they're well. They drugs. said they found some drugs in her body. Drugs, so, yeah. They well, know, they said, what, yeah. Something else, fentanyl what or whatever you call it. You know. Oh really? Wow. Yeah. Wow. But it was said that that could have been given to her after, like. So, you know, in the hospital, but still, mm. she was a train wreck. Yeah, there, there was a. We were driving north on one hundred and one, 
sort of traffic, everybody going like 40 miles an hour. And this guy on a motorcycle comes flying in the sl- slow lane, flying mm-hmm. by everybody. I said, man, that guy, that guy gets hit. He's going to die. And all of a mm-hmm. sudden, everything slowed down. And we went around him. That kid was on the ground there in a pool of blood on the motorcycle. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. You know when you see people going through traffic? Yeah. And you say, man, oh, they do it all the time. Yeah. gets hit, and he's going to get hurt. And sure they enough. do it all the time. Uh, and by the way, by the way, uh, before we sign off here, last night I was watching the last episode of Westworld. Why? I have no idea. Don't spoil it. Huh? Don't spoil it. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway, but at the end of the thing, they have like, you know, how the episode was made. Mm-hmm. And there are a whole bunch of people who are dead in, on the ground in this show. And they've all got blood where their heads are on the on the ground. And I'm going, gee, they had to go around and spray all that blood and so on. Turns out these are little plastic things they put under oh. their head. <laughs> and it looks like a pool of blood. Really? Awesome. So Anne Hayes really isn't dead. They just put some f- vinyl blood under her to make her look like she was good. My friend hey, worked question, on that show. Question for the group before we sign off. Is anybody else excited about the very last episode of Better Call Saul tonight, or is that just me? They all die. Oh, I'm, I'm, huh. I can't wait. I've, I've decided to binge watch it oh. um, when, from the beginning, so I haven't watched even the first one yet. So. Oh, okay. Oh. But f- any, any, uh, how many people here are watch Better Call Saul? Would you raise your hand? I watched up through the last season, but not this okay, season. Not so really how many good. think that he will die in the final episode. I but wasn't wasn't Better Call Saul a prequel to Breaking Bad, or maybe I'm no, mistaken. it's a, it's a, well, it's it's both. Yeah, it's parallel. mostly a prequel. Yeah, they take place in parallel times, but they mm-hmm. only meet up with each other at the end, towards the end. But it, mm-hmm. it's 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 a great show. It's been a fun show. I enjoy it. I'm glad it's going. I'm glad it's going because I hate these shows that go too long. You know, it's nice to know. And hey, it's time to go, folks. We had a good time. See you later. Yeah, yeah. seven seasons. Nice seeing you. Exactly. Goodbye. Exactly. So yeah. Len will be watching that tonight, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. You know, and so will Mike Chisholm. And uh, Jeff, you don't even know what we're talking about, do you? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, we've run, we run over our time. Charlene, you haven't said a word, but we, we don't mind that. Just nice well, having I, you there. I tried to, but you just oh. ignored me. Oh, well, say <laughs> oh, Did you raise your hand? Yeah. I didn't see it. I'm sorry. Yeah. What well, what did you want to say? Well, I don't remember now. Fuck you, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to butt in. You just have to start talking. That's yeah, you how just, you just yeah. fight for space like everybody else. Okay, yeah. I will. You know. You just well, don't let the blood pressure get too high. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> In some place, just go, shut up, Scott. I want to talk. <laughs> or shut up, Jeff. I want to talk. Okay. <laughs> or shut up, Rick. You talk too much. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you, Charlene, for being here. Sorry. Oh, you're get, I, I, you were up in the corner, and my eye, I guess, wasn't going towards that area. Uh, <laughs> But thank you. We always appreciate you being here. Rick, thank you. always like you being here. Ryan, of course. Terrific, you know. And where's the kid today? She's she was here a second at the very beginning, but I don't know where she is. Oh, okay. She got better things to do than hang out with old Uncle Alex. Um, <laughs> Scott Boddicker, thank you uh, so much. Uh, Lena LaFrisco, Charlie Wallace, pl- always a pleasure. Mandy. There she is. It wouldn't be right if you weren't here. And you look more beautiful than you ever have today because somehow I enhanced got, my appearance. You got the Lucille Ball fuzz face thing on you. Yeah. Uh, and I do the same thing, by the way. You know, if I turn it off, it's horrid. Uh, Jeff Stein, thank you. And thank you to Mike Chisholm. And finally, here's Edward Berger to say, That's all, folks. There you go. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Have a good week. Bye.